We are here with the elaborators. We are back. It has been, I don't know how many days, but it's been months since we've been here. And I'm going to get straight to it by welcoming in Pastor Stan and Pastor D. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having us. Great to be here. Great Great to be back. back. Right? It's been a little while. We're doing this without Pastor Justin today because he is... Taking a break. Taking Lovely. a break. Yep. Well-deserved yep. break. Yeah. And so we're figuring this out as we go without the expert in the room. I'm pu- mm. pushing double the buttons and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but we have a... And, and you're not one that really pushes people's buttons. So No, I do. Oh, no. I, you're, you're pretty, pretty adverse. chill and relax. And, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not one to get into conflict and push buttons, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Deanna pushes buttons. <laughs> stir. <laughs> I stir. Right, stir right, right, the pot right. and push yep, the buttons. That's it. <laughs> I'm not sure what other analogies we can squeeze in there. Mm. But we are back and we've got hopefully a whole year's worth or 11 months left of podcasts. Imagine that. Mm. Wow. No, we, won't, we won't think that too too far ahead on that one just mm. yet. We'll go week week by week. So that's what three podcast or in the year? Yeah, let's say that's a good goal. <laughs> uh, we can talk about lots of things. We'll set a low Send bar. Send in there. your questions that you want answered. Right? Yeah, it's no, true. No. Yeah, yeah. This this time around, we've got all our Werribee Baptist Church Instagrams, and you can on our website werribeebaptist.org.au yeah. slash elaborators. There is a contact form. Oh, at the bottom of all of our podcasts, you scroll to the bottom. There's a contact form there, an email. Or you can get us on the Instagram comments or the YouTube comments, and we'd love to hear from people. We know there's people listening and watching. We know you're there. Right. What is your deepest, darkest secret or question that you want answered? Yeah. And yeah. give us some fodder so that we can uh, have some things to work with. For sure. To answer the questions that they want answered, right? Not just the ones we think they need to know. <laughs> right. Which is so many podcasts where we'll just start <laughs> rambling and then we'll just ramble, ramble. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think that we're probably headed down yeah, that road. We're headed down that road. We're laying the groundwork to get people to connect with us, right? Yep. Isn't that what it's we been, really It's desire? been three, what, what month are we in? February now. Mm. February. I think the last like one was months, maybe yeah. the end of November, se- se- September, or maybe no. October. It would have been October. Really? Yeah, yeah. We didn't do any of November. We're slackers. I remember having a chat. With Stan and Pastor Justin saying, I'd love to just get one more in November. I remember that. I remember and we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because November and life December happens. exist. Yeah, yeah. And we happens. ignored you, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christmas, the silly yeah. season. Yeah. But we're back in February for the term. And we are diving into a topic today based on what we've preached the last two weeks here at Werribee Baptist Church on our mission and our vision mm-hmm. and how that our church's mission and vision can apply with what we can bring to the mission and vision. Mm. Um, and so we've got a, a question for the day, if I just read out our question, is about our faith or wise or our passions, what breaks our heart in, mm. in life, and then what we can do to bring that to the church's mission, not just our we're Baptist church yeah. striving to be a loving community, seeking, serving, sharing Jesus' mission. Hey, mm. you got it right. I got it right. Well done. Yeah, well done, well done. And I designed it enough times that it's in my brain. <laughs> but the the... Church is capital C's vision of mm, mm. gospel and discipleship and saving souls. Okay. Mm. Sound like a good topic? Yep. Sounds I think great. So. We'll see how we go. Well, so Pastor Stan, you preached the last two weeks here mm. uh, on these mission and visions. And one of the big things was the whys. So like the why is our church here and why is our church doing what it's doing? And I would ask you, um, why do we bother with the why? Why do we bother with the why? Because that sets the direction. If you don't know why you're doing something, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to not be passionate about it mm. because it has no purpose. It's like, well, I'm, I'm, I go to work every day, but I'm, you know, I'm making widgets or whatever. But I don't really care about that. I just care that I get paid and mm-hmm. it's providing you yeah. know, food for my family and all that. And that's great. And that's why I go make widgets, if that's what you do. But... When we look at the reason for existence, that really defines everything else. When we understand why we're here, then that propels what we do. So you got to start with why. Nice. I just had a recollection when you were talking about that, about um, one of my, the reason I left my past job and swapped with my wife to become a stay at home dad was because I was sitting there designing the third product catalog in six years using mm, the same wow. furniture and the same templates and t- mm. prices. And it was very much a huge part of it was what am I doing? Why am I here? I really had those that moment sitting really? at my desk, like what am I doing? 
Wow, wow. What, what purpose does this exhibition furniture catalogue have six years in? It didn't give you passion and wake you up in the morning. It did, it did <laughs> yeah. not. It did not. And that right. was, there was a real moment where that was where we had the chats at home about what are we, what are we doing. So mm-hmm. right, right. Yeah. And, and she had a job that she was passionate about that did wake her up every morning and could make decent money at. Yes. To facilitate you being the stay-at-home dad at that point. Yeah. You could have gone and got another graphic design job mm-hmm. and still use those skills and the degree and stuff right. like that. But you decided to shift it towards doing God's kind of, God, I'm going to say God's work Ministry. or working in God's yeah, house. Yeah, I think, I think, sure. In that regard, it's it's coming back to what Stan said about the purpose. Yeah, okay. Um, and, and I guess at that point, for me, I probably didn't realize at the time, I would realize it much more now of my drive to work in ministry. Yeah, okay. I would say back then it was probably a poking of you've like you're this isn't what you're passionate yeah. about. This isn't what you're I've got you here for. Mm. Um and so I guess that was an early stirring of that, I suppose. So I suppose it starts with that stirring and then then um you get the opportunity and then you do yeah. it. I mean, do you feel a greater sense of purpose then, would you say? Now and uh, yeah, now very much so. Yeah. yeah. From from doing little you know, I was at the time designing a catalogue for one of the largest exhibition companies in the country. Oh wow. But I much more enjoy shuffling the furniture around, you know, <laughs> and then than doing that. It's a different uh, different calling, yeah, different well, passion. Well, you just used a word right there, calling. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people struggle with that uh, whole concept of call, and some people don't even believe in a call. But uh, several years ago, I was thinking through this and trying to figure out how to explain the call of God to people in a way that, that they could really understand it because it, it can be this mystical thing, this, the call of God. But I, I describe it as this. It's when passion and ability and opportunity meet. When those three things come together, that is your calling. And you described that as you were talking yeah. about just who you are, how you're wired, how you're made and everything, your passions and the skill set that you mm. bring. And then the opportunity came along. And there you are. Yep. So, And I heard the opportunity. As well, mm. like I think sometimes you know you got to be, mm. you got to receive it, hear it, yep. and recognize it. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, would it be fair to say you really believe in the local church or the global church? I mean, what, what, what's the driver passion behind your why? Uh, yeah, so my why is I am very passionate about making sure that people can go to church. Okay. Um, so it's not necessarily you know I'm I'm not I'm not at all someone to go out on the street and proclaim and and evangelize and 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 share it that way but I'll do everything I can to make sure that the not even we say church is in the building but that the the discipleship options the the process of yeah. having a church community and things exists mm. um, and is functioning so that people can come yeah, but you, you, you just described the physical coming to church, but a lot of the work that you've done here, uh, and because of COVID, really, centered around making church accessible, sure. not physically, yeah. uh, the, <clears throat> making, giving us an online presence. and The everything. other 162 hours a week or whatever it is that we're not in the building on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yep. And, and that's where, I mean, your, your fingerprints are on everything around here, but you've created our online presence, really. Yeah, because that's for better what, or worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah good. I think it's better. I think it's for better. <laughs> yeah, but th- but that you talk about cr- making it so that people can come to church. Yeah, but that doesn't just mean physically. Sure. So yeah. So I guess mm. you could use you could swap that can to to access mm. access um, you know, that, that, coming that there to are, access church. Yeah, right? that there are resources available to people. Um, a lot of this in the in the marketing world and the sales world is a company wants to be there when a customer needs them, wherever mm. there is at that point of yeah, yeah. need. So for me, it's it's taking that from a church perspective of somebody needs something now, we would say hope, mm. yeah. um, and they, they, they can go online and search a church near me or whatever it might be or ask a question and hopefully mm, mm. we have some content online that starts the ball rolling. Anyway, enough about me. That's a lot about me. Yeah, um, yeah, Stan, yeah. In the, um, we'll, we'll dive back a little bit here. In terms of the why, there are th- you preached three E's. Three do you e's. have those three E's? Yeah, that, that's kind of random that I would do three E's, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Stan, Stan doesn't at all like making things line up with the, what's yeah. the I kind of alliteration. Need? Alliteration. alliteration. Well, well, I know the sermon's done when it's alliterated. <laughs> right? right, 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 right. That's from God because yep. that's what God would have done. <laughs> 
Um, Lucky but, the English yeah. language is a big thesaurus. So anyway, the three E's, uh, which actually came out of looking at uh, the church uh, that was in Thessalonica, which would be modern-day Greece, um, uh, is that they had lived out their why, and the three E's were there was evidence you could see it in the way that they were behaving in their lives. So there's evidence that they were actually following Jesus. They had set an example for others. They had followed the example that Paul gave them, and then they were following the example of Christ. But then it became an example. And then the last one was an echo uh, because they had been an example to others. It said that the gospel, the word of the Lord, was ringing out from them, and that that phrase "ringing out" is actually from the Greek word that we get "echo" from, and uh, so that was the the earmarks uh, of an effective lived out why was there's evidence, you're an example, and there's an echo, and it keeps going, and then you're yeah living so, out your why. So you're both further along in ministry than I am by a long way. We're older than you are. <laughs> you're older than you are. <laughs> and you, but you started it a lot earlier than I did, I believe, too. Um, but would you, uh, what would you classify as your perfect echo in your area of ministry? Oh, it's interesting because I was drawn into youth ministry um, because I felt it was a gap in my life. So I, it's, it's see a need, meet a need kind of thing, I suppose. It was a felt need for me, and so I wanted to be able to put into a system um, in a new place. And the, and the opportunity was there, the request was there, and and so I, I went into that space, right? Just recently, as last year, I went back and met with some of those grown-up youths who are now 40. <laughs> wow. And to wow. see the ones that are still, that grew in their faith and are still journeying um, is always, you know, that's, it's, it's like it's stuck. That yeah. was really, really encouraging. It turns out the people that I met with are the ones that didn't stick with, but they were still wanting. They still wanted to talk about it, and they even expressed value, even though they're not still journeying the Christian <clears throat> journey. Mm -hmm. They uh, still found it as a really valuable experience, and so it had an impact. And you never know; the story's still being written, so you don't know what God's mm -hmm. doing. So, just seeing seeing it played out through the years, I think, was really. Um, I find that fascinating watching people on their spiritual journey. When you say that's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say the, the the echo, the perfect echo that I would see live, lived out would be, as I look across the decades of um, ministry now, it's the people that I've ministered to and with who have been raised up and are doing ministry themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, for, for a season, I was uh, working with a mission organization actually sending missionaries out of Australia. And again, that was still finding people, developing them, inspiring them mm. to go, and just drawing people to to step up, and whether, whether it be vocationally or just volunteer-wise, recruiting and training and, and just developing people. That, that would be the echo, because the more I do that, then when I'm gone, it'll still be going. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. That's, the, that's the point. In fact, I, I was talking to... Uh, a 24-year-old young man that's part of our church uh, just last week, and I gave him a list of about half a dozen people. Some of them were in the room, and I pointed them out. And I said, "Today we need to be giving away the ministry to you, you know, because I'm 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 not young anymore. I mean, I'm yeah, anyway, <laughs> I feel older every day. But uh, if we, we have to give that away, and mm -hmm. it's part of identifying who those people are and being able to pass it on and empower them." And, you know, but I think added to that, though, is you can do so much as one person. But when you pass that on or you echo it on to other people, um, it, it does a couple of things. It keeps it going at a broad, I mean, exponentially. But it also lets them tap into their finding their feet purchased for their feet. You know, mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense. I don't know. But um, just getting involved so that they can experience that growth and stuff that we're all that's gotten us all to the place we're at. So if we keep it to ourselves and just do it ourselves, it, it doesn't have that that natural expansion, which is what we're supposed to do as Christians, I think. So can we, we've all ended up, we all found a why and we've all ended up in ministry. Can people have their own faith-wise, their passions? I hope so. How do, they, how do they find them? How do they put them to use? What do you think? Yeah, well, it's... <clears throat> 
To me, Out, outside uh, of a church, study. Mm-hmm. right, 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 right. The 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 why for every person on the planet is to glorify God, to worship God at, at the core, and the way that's expressed from individual to individual can be very different because we're all different people. God's made us unique and different. And he's given us, and here's the answer to the question, he's mm-hmm. given us all different passions. You're excited about things that I'm not excited about. And Deanna's definitely <laughs> excited about things that I'm not excited about, uh, and vice versa. And he gives us those different passions because he there's so much to accomplish in the world that if we didn't have different passions, then we wouldn't get everything done. You know, there's people that are passionate about homelessness, mm-hmm. and and they they live and die for uh, making sure that people have a roof over their head or food in their belly and things like that. There are people that are passionate about uh, seeing uh, sex trafficking brought to an end. You know, overseas and maybe even in Australia. I'm not even sure what the stats are, but you know what. Well, well, I'm concerned about that. I'm not that passionate. That's probably why I don't know if it's in Australia or mm-hmm. not. Yeah. You know? yep. But there's some people listening right now that are screaming at their phone or whatever because, <laughs> yes, right. it's in Australia, and this is a, and they know all that yeah. because they're passionate about that. And, you know, the the thing that you, you got to look at is it's uh, Andy Stanley said something about what breaks your heart, mm. you know, and uh, others have talked about a holy discontent and things like that. And it's what is that thing that just gets you stirred up when you see it? You just think that shouldn't be mm. in a world today that should not be. And it makes you it, angry. Yeah, yeah. It makes you angry. Mm. And, and you may think even, why doesn't God do something about that? Well, and it could be that God put you here. To do something about it. So you lean into that thing, whatever that is that gets you stirred up and angry and frustrated or, or whatever word you want to use, and that then can become your why. It's talk radio that, beca- <laughs> that drives it all now. I was uh, I was at a friend's house <laughs> yesterday, and she was on the phone with uh, somebody, and they were just going, banging on. Man, they were banging on about all the things that were wrong and stuff like that. And she uh, cheekily said, oh, well, when you get to Parliament, you can fix it all, you know? Right. But I think that, that, though, I mean, it's very easy to see the problems and stuff like that. But it's another thing um, to actually be willing to engage, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that if you can identify your why, what am I really passionate about? And, and why, why, should, why should the church expand? Why do, is what we believe uh, why do we believe it's the right thing or the truth? And and why do other people need that? Why did I need it? If we can answer that question or help people find answers to that question, um, it just it releases them into a f- more fullness of life and experience mm-hmm. um, because that's what we were designed to. That's what Stan kind of was saying, that we're designed to glorify God and have relationship with Him. So that's really our bottom line why of being human um, even if you don't know that it's uh, that God-shaped hole kind of concept, but yeah. So we will probably dive into this in a few weeks' time, we reckon. But Stan, are there ways, you know, even even using the the homeless, homelessness category or whatever, they're they're big, giant, unattainable, you know. Like, but what about little old me? What can I bring? How do you how do you get going? Like, how can you can you get momentum in a why? Like, what What can it be to get going? Yeah, well, you're, you're not going to personally, individually eradicate homelessness, but you might be able to give a homeless person one meal, right? Yep. So you've you've, you've made a difference that day, that moment a little for, echo. for that person. Right, right, right. And, and then that can build. And, um, you know, Jesus actually uh, uh, said that the poor will always be with you. Mm. So... I know uh, Bono many years ago wanted to eradicate poverty. And uh, I I used to say, well, sad to say, Jesus said it's always going to be here. But that doesn't mean we don't try to make a difference. So Mm -hmm. we we do our little bit that we can uh, in that space. Um, And then then is it it always the church's job? You know, like there's... Always the church's job. Like how come the church doesn't do this and how come the church doesn't do that? Is it up to... Us <clears throat> well, the, the, what is the church? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to ask. Right, <laughs> right, right. The church, the church is the body of Christ. The believers. It's mm. not the building. It's not yep. the programs. It is the people. So each individual doing those things is the church doing those things, rather than pointing at that organization. Mm. Yep, and saying, "How come that corporate body 
isn't solving all the problems. Right, right. No, nobody ever asked why uh, you know the ba- local bakery isn't you know taking care of all the world's ills and, and problems. Right. But they say those things about the church. I, th- I think the church you know ends up being a punching bag just because uh, it's like, and it's because we actually care about everything. You know, and we want yeah. people's <clears throat> lives to be better. We want to multiply hope. We want their life to be better here, but for eternity, really. And mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what it's all about for us. But that means meeting people where they are willing to get our hands dirty and get messy with uh, people's lives and the difficulties and everything. And the, the church is the only organization in the world that, that does all of that. And it's also the only organization that exists for those that aren't in it yet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not for ourselves. It's not about what we can do and be. Yep. It's about the people that aren't yet following Jesus. So the if the the mission we talk about mission and vision and method and mission, so can our we've got our we've got our core gospel gospel spreading yep. why? What about can our individual whys change? Like can our passions change? Will God change our passions? Yes. I mean, when I I aged out of youth ministry, well, it's to some degree. I mean, do you, yeah, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> to be relevant. And, and so sometimes there are natural changes, like, you know, but also sometimes our passions change. Like I, um, I'll give you an example. Um, I have a couple conferences that I could go to this year and I had to look at, okay, well, what am I on about right now? What is God asking from me right now? And what aligns more with that, right? So, and that helped in my decision-making process because my, my ministry focus has shifted um, from caring for missionary workers, which has been that for several years. And, invested a lot of time, energy, and effort into that. But I'm not really involved in that space as much anymore, a little bit, but not a lot. But I am really connecting in the local church and trying to find out better ways to improve the experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when people walk through the door and what are our gaps, what do we need, and things like that. So the driving why has become more about um, this community rather than the global community. So yeah. I think that our whys do change for different reasons. Yeah. Um, well, from a for our listeners and our viewers, we know many of you are watching on YouTube and also listening on Apple and Spotify and things. Um, what can they take out of today? How can they how can they find their why? We've talked a little bit about what breaks their their heart mm. a bit. Um, is that is that a challenge to them this week to think on that? Yeah, I mean, I think so. But I also think that I'm going to get all spiritual on you. Is that okay? You're allowed. It's a <laughs> Church podcast. <laughs> oh, but I mean, I think God has a plan and a purpose for all of us, right? And and, and it, it's not by accident. You don't do what you do by accident and that God has a plan to use it. So ask Him. So I think mm. prayer is a, an important part of it. But also even asking people around you, you know, what do you think I'm good at and stuff? I went into counseling because somebody said to me, because I like to ask questions, you should be a counselor. And, and I kept hearing that over and over. And it, and I'm not I, I'm not a registered counselor because I don't want to be. <laughs> but it did um, help me develop that that gifting and stuff like that. Um, be, and I think that God has used it. But if we ask Him and we start listening to voices that He's placed around us, and, and of course, yeah, His Word, obviously I'm yeah. very passionate about that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that that helps us kind of refine or to hear His voice. Mm. And so even asking that, God, what would you have me do? And what, what have you designed me to do? And because a lot of times we don't know ourselves, we have lack that self awareness. But that's another counseling thing. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that helps though. That that um, remembering that it is kind of like when we're talking about the church in general, it is a spiritual entity. So therefore, including him in that process is probably worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Mm, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So I, I'd say yes. Clearly, pray about it. Ask God to reveal it and things. But then go back to that conversation we were having about what is it that's stirring you up and, mm. and, and all that, and and fi- and figure out. And it, it's not that hard. Uh, the things that you're passionate about, and again, ask someone else mm. if, if you don't know. Because try, is it in your gut? It's in your, yeah. It's in your gut. You know, you don't know? overthink it. What exactly? What is that thing? And then how are you made? What what could you do about that? Now, if if you're passionate about AFL and you want to, uh, you know, kick 100 goals next year, but you look like me, you're not going to do that. Right. Okay, so you can be passionate and not have the ability or the skills. So you got to say, what's my passion? What are the things I'm passionate about? What abilities do I have? What do I bring to that table? And then what opportunities are in front of me? Mm-hmm. And as you're reflecting, you're praying, I can guarantee you, those things will come together. You, you will start thinking about it from that perspective and you'll see them start aligning and matching them. We say, 
here it is. Here's my opportunity. Well, and you ask the question, how can I use my passion? How can I use AFL as a ministry tool? I mean, whatever it is that you're mm. like, how, how like, you, like, yeah. that's, a good, like, that's a good fill in the blank though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you're, are you a runner? How can you use running to, as yeah. a ministry tool or walking or fishing or I don't know, I'm saying all man stuff, but <laughs> no, <laughs> but maybe, maybe if you're not, if you're not physically capable of kicking a hundred goals, go and be a part of the club. Yeah. And, yeah. and go be a footy chaplain. Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or organize a youth event where the youth all go to the footy mm. together and then, you know, they have some time to hang out yeah. afterwards or whatever. If there it's the right team. I, apparently there's right teams and wrong teams, I hear. And then you, <laughs> then you teach a lesson on kicking goals for Jesus. Oh, oh there it is. There, there you go. go. Da, da, yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I haven't done any buttons the whole time. I haven't done any buttons. There's this one. Deserves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You were thinking the put but I gave you the other one. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, thank you for, we'll wrap up, we'll wrap up this episode. We've got cool. lots more to talk Sounds about in the good. next few weeks. Um, and for uh, viewers and listeners, our application for you today is to think on those things. What was the calling? Opportunity? Skills? Yeah, yeah. The calling is your your passion, um, your skills, your abilities, and uh, the opportunity. And the opportunity. Passion, when skills, those and opportunity. come together, yep. Think about it. Put them on a whiteboard somewhere. Write them down and then try and dot points hey, and stuff. And, and if you process some of this stuff, tell us about it. Absolutely. Oh, we'd, yeah. we'd love to hear. We'd love to hear your stories because yeah. that's going to fuel what we do. Um, it's For gonna, sure, it's going to let us know if we're making a difference. Yeah, well, the Apple, uh, the, the elaborators uh, podcast needs an echo, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> let's 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 hear the the echo. We'd yeah. love to hear what people's passions are. Did you listen? Did we say it right? I don't know. Don't don't don't. Let don't. me push the button. That means I've got forty five seconds left to wrap this whole thing up. Thank you, Beautiful. Pastor Stan, Pastor D. Thank yeah, you, everybody. Yeah. We'll have um, Pastor Justin back in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. And we can um, keep on going with this crazy podcast, see what happens. See, look at the echo he's created. He, right? Yeah. yeah. Look, we managed to do it. We did a thing. <laughs> we did a thing. We yeah. Think, right? We think, well, we think we did. I'll edit it and see what happens. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 But get, get on the socials, share us around, tell us what you're thinking, ask the questions, and we will see you all next time. Yeah.